Hello and welcome to Bitrix24 Live. Thank you for joining today. This is your opportunity to ask questions and get answers from our Bitrix24 experts. I'm Sam Connor, Sales Manager at Intraface. Uh, I'll be helping to take all of your questions today. And we've had quite a few questions come in during the week. So we'll start with those questions. But if you're on watching us on LinkedIn or if you're on Zoom with us, please do ask any questions into the question box and we'll be happy to answer those for you in today's session. OK, so as I say, we've had quite a few questions that have already come into us. So we'll start with some of those questions. So let's go into our Bitrix 24 system. One of the first questions we've had is regarding telephony. So someone is wondering, is there a way to show a number of reports in the telephony module? And they're looking to calculate how many calls each sales rep has made in a specific time period. So there are reports depending on how you've integrated telephony. So if we go into the telephony module here, then if, if you've rented a Bitrix24 number, then what we can do here is we can go into the call statistics area. And then within here, what we can do is we can see here call statistics. We can choose a time period for what we're looking to report on. So I might say, let's say, for example, if I want to look at all of the calls from last year, so I want to do an annual analysis then I can break that down so I can see the number of inbound calls, outbound calls, what's been missed, and then the total number of calls here. So that's a useful report. You might want to actually check where calls maybe haven't been answered. So that's quite an important metric to be able to report on. So again, here we could look in our unanswered calls report. And we can then see where we have missed calls in the system. But also another nice report you might want to be able to build is call density. So actually analyzing actually how often calls are coming in at different time periods. So you know when to allocate staff in your maybe call center or within your business, you need to have staff who are answering calls. So here we can see, for example, we had four inbound calls uh, on Wednesday between 11 and 12. But we can see here as well, Monday five till six, there was quite a few missed calls. So that's an area where we need to allocate staff, maybe more in the future. So that's a really nice high level report to be able to interpret the information in the system very easily. Okay, so I can see a question uh, has come in on LinkedIn. So how to connect an approval process to show any SPA interface. So if you could just provide some more details about what type of approval you're looking for, that, that would be useful. Within, if we go into the SPA area, so anyone who's maybe new to Bitrix, if you're not sure what an SPA is, it's essentially a module within the CRM system that allows you to create brand new entities inside the CRM system. So what we can do here is let's say we go into our smart process automation. We've got one here for a returns process. So here we can see a return process. So it may be you want to create an approval element on a, a return, for example. So it might need to go to a manager, first of all, to approve or reject. So one way, for example, is we could maybe have, when a, a new return has been submitted, you know, we could have an approval stage in here. And when it goes to that approval stage, if we go to automation rules, then what we could do is inside here, we could change who is responsible for the return at that stage. So let's say, for example, we just move this up to the approval stage. And what we could do is in here, run that immediately. And then we're going to change here on behalf of the responsible person. Let's move it to Max, who is the returns manager. So we're going to update the stage there. So that now, as soon as the return comes in, we move it to the approval stage. It's going to go to Max to either approve or reject. And then what we, we could do within here 
is Max could come in here and see all the information. We could then have a field in here. So what we could do is let's say, let's have a list field. Okay, and then we could add that information into here. And we could say before this can be moved to the say returning progress stage, then we have to have that, that field completed. This is just one way, for example, if you've got a very specific approval processes, then we could have a look at those with you. But let's then say if we move to the approval stage, it's gone to max, okay? And if we try to move any further, it won't let us because we need to approve this in a system. And we are max in here, so that has gone to ourselves. So I can see the information. I'm gonna approve this return, and now we can progress it into the next stage of the return process inside this SPA. So that's one way that we could set up uh, a return approval, sorry, a re, an approval process within an SPA. And, and in this SPA, we are using this as a return for products. Okay, so if you have any other questions there, please do add them into our LinkedIn page or onto Zoom, and we can discuss those with you. Uh, another point there, we've kind of briefly looked at automations there. Another question we had was, we would like to be able to email clients directly from inside the CRM to eliminate steps in our communication process. Can we do this? Yes, absolutely. So that's a really useful way to use the power of automations inside Bitrix to send out communications to the clients. So for example, if we go into the CRM, and if we look inside our pipeline, so here we've got a process for managing customer orders. Okay, so let's now go into here. So inside this website order pipeline, we're feeding in orders from a website. So we have a custom e-commerce solution. So orders from a WooCommerce site, they can automatically feed into our pipeline here so we can manage the stages so once the order has been submitted it comes to the order stage and then we can see we've got the package order center dispatch and order dispatch stage and if we go into our automation rules then what you could do at a certain stage is we could then communicate to the customer that their order is at that specific stage in the process so for example, if we wanted to set up a new email communication at one of these stages, we can come into automations and all we have to do is click or type in here email and we can open up the automation to send email to the customer. So I can click on there. This then opens up the email template. So this can be dynamically populated with information from the CRM system. So from here, I could choose the client's details. Okay, so we're packing up the order and then we could finish off the email and add the responsible person from the deal. Okay, and that could be, you could add your logo, your, your signature into there as well. And then we need to give this a title. Okay, and that can then be saved and let's move that into the package order stage. So as soon as we hit that stage in the system, we're gonna be sending out this email to the customer. Okay, so that's been saved there and we can see here as well the centre dispatch. We've also got another email campaign set up there and you can see here we've got our branding on there. So you can make these email communications that you're automating based on the stage of your sales process. They can be managed incredibly easily using the automation tools within Bitrix 24. Okay, so we'll save that information. And then let's go into one of our orders. Okay, so we can see some information here on the orders. So all of the information you can store inside 
your deals. And then if we go into the system here, completed these tasks for the first stage of the deal. Okay, and then let's move this through the stages. So when we're packaging the order, we can see that all email has now been sent out to the customer. And then when we go through to dispatch, again, we have the next email sent out through the system. So you can automate the communications to your clients using the automation rules. So that's a really useful way to essentially streamline any process you have internally. You don't need to manually send these email communications that can all be managed inside Bittrex using automation rules. Now, if you're wanting to use automation rules, if you're looking now on your Bittrex system, you need to make sure you've got at least the uh, basic cloud license. So if you're on a free version of Bittrex, you're not going to be able to access these automation rules. OK, so that's just something to, to bear in mind. OK, so that's a look at automation rules. So if you have any other questions around automations, please do add them into the LinkedIn page or here on Zoom as well. OK, another question we've had earlier on was around the contact center. So is it possible to connect multiple Facebook business pages into Bittrex? So it's a really useful way to be able to manage communications with your potential customers. So if we go into our contact center, I'll just show you, first of all, how this looks. So if you have connected your Facebook business page, then what we can do is if a, a potential client, they go to your Facebook messenger system. That message can then automatically feed into Bittrex 24. And then your team can respond to those messages directly through the system. So I've just messaged our Facebook business page and we'll see, there we go, that the question has come directly into the system. So that's through, from our Facebook messenger. So I can reply to the client directly in, inside our Bittrex 24 system. And you'd be able to connect all your other channels as well, such as WhatsApp, Instagram, live chat. So all of those different tools can be fed into Bittrex. And then your teams can respond to those messages through your open channel platform. But the question was about connecting multiple Facebook business pages, and that, that is possible. So if we look at here, our Facebook integration, we can see here the page that we have connected. But if I wanted to connect another page, then all I would need to do is open up another open channel. So inside here, I would select a, a fresh open channel, and then I will continue to connect to our Facebook Messenger system. OK, so we would log in here, authorize that Facebook page, and then connect it inside the open channel here. And then once you've connected that, you would then be able to choose who from your team is responsible for dealing with those requests. So it could be maybe a group of people or it could be a specific department, okay? So you'd be able to manage all of that within the system here. So if you do have maybe different businesses that have different Facebook pages, you could connect all of those into Bittrex and then the teams responsible for the different brands or businesses, they could just be responsible for managing the requests from that particular Facebook business page. And that is the same for setting up Instagram. And if you want to connect live chat, all of these are, are using the open channel feature. The open channel is essentially the connector between these different systems and feeding those communications into Bittrex. So again, there are limitations there. So if you're on specific types of licenses, then you, you are restricted on the number of open channels that you can connect. So for example, if you're, let's say, on a standard cloud plan, then you will be limited to the number of open channels that you're able to connect inside the system. And also, you might not be able, for example, on the standard cloud, you can't set up canned replies. Whereas if you're on a professional plan or above, you could have canned replies so you can quickly respond to the customer. If they have a question, you could have that canned reply ready. 
and then you could respond to the client instantly. So there are limitations. So if you are looking at evaluating Bittrex, you need to make sure you are checking the different functionality on the licenses. If you're looking at a, an on-premise edition, then we have all of the functionality for the Bittrex 24 system. Okay, so that is a look there at our open channel system. Okay, so another question that we've had here is, can we also set permissions within that Facebook open channel? So that's a question we've just had there. So again, if you're wanting to believe where you say setting permissions, this would be here in terms of access permissions for who is able to manage the actual setting up of the open channel. Then within here, what we can do is we could set up the actual connect communication. You could set roles essentially for who's able to create those connections inside the system. So if you only wanted to say the manager to be able to do this, then we could deny all access for other user roles. And again, if you want to look at the statistics, then again, you, if you want only certain roles to be able to access that information, again, you can set the permission control for each role on the system, and then you apply that role to each user or department. Okay, and if I just show you there, then if we just go up inside here, then we have our conversation statistics. So all of those different connections we've got through our Bittrex system, you'd be able to see all of the, the analysis of that through Bittrex. So from the number of sessions, the average reply time, for example, again, really useful is the activity. So I could see when we're having the most sessions throughout the whole reporting week. So that's really useful. We have many call centers who use Bittrex. If you're gonna be using this as a call center tool, this is a valuable report to be able to see when is the contact from your customers at its peak? So then we can make sure we're allocating resources appropriately at those different stages. Okay, so that is a look at the conversation statistics. So a question there, are we using a paid version of Bittrex? So yes, this is, well, this is one of our demonstration sites. So this has the functionality of a paid edition. Yeah, if you if you are using a free edition of Bittrex, you are gonna be very restricted as to the functionality. So what we're showing here on our demonstration sites, then you are gonna be very limited. You will see functionality not available on your free edition, such as automation rules on the CRM system. So in leads and deals, if you're on the free edition, you're not gonna be able to use the power of automation. So it's very valuable to be able to, to move to a commercial subscription, to be able to access these features through the Bittrex 24 platform. Okay, so that is a look at some of those contact center tools that are really valuable to be able to feed communications essentially directly inside the system. Okay, question here through our Zoom channel. So is there a way to see more fields in the Kanban view? I assume by Kanban view and fields, you're referring to leads or deals. So it's, it's the same essentially on both, but let's go into our lead database. So essentially, if you're new to the CRM system, just to explain within the CRM system here, you can set custom fields. See if you wanted to capture certain information, you know, you could add this data into the system. Okay, so say if I wanted to add a potential meeting date, I could save that information inside the system here. So that's a custom field, essentially. You're able to store your own bespoke information through the CRM. So if I come out of here, the question was around, can we customize the fields that show on the Kanban? So this is the Kanban view. So if this is the Kanban. We've got our stages across the top here. If we go into the settings area here, then inside the Kanban settings, what we can do is configure the view for the form. And then this is where we can customize the information that we show for the Kanban. So let's say, for, for example, if I wanted to bring in that field that I had just added, potential meeting dates, I can select that field and then I can press save. And now you can see on this Kanban form here, 
that potential meeting date has been added into the front end here on the Kanban view. So this is really useful to, to use this functionality. So instead of having to click into every single lead, you could just use that Kanban form view to be able to see that information, the critical information very quickly through the system. So it's a really powerful way to be able to manage all of that inside your system. Okay, so another question, as soon as we open an item in the CRM for any one then option comes like invoice, deal, lead, can we show any approval process? Well, if you're using uh, at least the professional cloud plan, then that professional cloud plan gives you access to business processes. Okay, and using a business process, you could then run an approval process based on, say, uh, as soon as the, the lead comes in. So based on the creation of the lead, we could then create and trigger an approval process. Or it really just depends exactly what type of approval process you're wanting to set up and how that should be triggered. Is it simply based on creation of an entity? Because with business processes, then yes, we could set up then a, a, a process based on that creation. So if I go into CRM settings, so inside automation here, we have business processes. So on business processes, you could set up essentially uh, a process for any entity. So from lead, contact, company, deals and quotes or invoices. So the entities that you've mentioned there. And then if we go into, say, you could see here the templates that have currently been set up. If I go to add a new template here. This opens up the business process designer tool, and this is where we could start to build out an approval business process. And then you can decide when this process is triggered. So, for example, are we running this process when that entity is added? So you mentioned about invoice, deal, leads. So it sounds like you've got a lot of entities you'd want to run these processes on. Then you could run that as soon as the entity is added. So if, when a new lead is added on the CRM system, we could run this business process, which has an approval inside the system. Okay, so what would be useful if you could just send us some more details about the exact approval process. So how many kind of layers of approval, what should happen as the system, as the approval is actioned. If you can let us know, then our team can take a look at that for you in more detail. Okay, so that is a look at at the approval processes. Um, SPA, so the question here again is around SPA reporting. How can we generate reports? So, so currently there is more limitations with the SPA report. So if we go back into say one of our SPAs, so this is where we manage returns inside the system. So one way to report is using the Kanban view here. So you can see the number of records at different stages. And if there's a value attached to the SPA, then you can see that summary across the top here. And then obviously we've also got a filtering tool. So any field that you add into the SPA, we could then use for reporting purposes. So inside here, for example, I might just want to look, report on all of the returns where it was either damaged in transit or there's a technical fault. Okay, so I could do that. Or maybe just look at what damage in transit. That brings that information. So you could use the filters to drill down into your data. And if you go into the list view, then here you can set up your table with the information. And then this can be exported out of Bittrex. So you can then decide how you would want to manage that information moving forward. Okay. So that is one way we can report within the system. Another way we can report as well is using one of our external applications that we have built for Bittrex 24. So if I just bring this up here, this is our views application. So our views application, it takes the data from Bittrex 24 and allows you to build high level dashboard reports and with this tool, we can feed in the SPA data. So through here, you can then build high-level advanced reports using the data 
from SPAs. So we can build reports like bar charts, line charts, target gauges or numerical figures here. And there's a huge variety of different types of reports we can build. So including say, maybe advanced pie charts or tables of information. So we could feed the information from SPAs and bring it into our high level advanced dashboard reporting tool. And this is called views. So if you want to go to our websites, then we have our views application here. So it's views.com if you'd like to get more information. Okay, so that is how we can do reporting for our SPA records. Okay, another question there, can we integrate Google Meet with Bittrex 24? So as standard, there is not uh, a direct integration between Bittrex 24 and Google Meet. Now, there are some applications in the marketplace that you may want to check out. So there may be within the marketplace here, you might be able to find uh, a third party application that does that integration for you. The really native integrations are for Zoom integration. So if we go into our, say, customer database inside our Bittrex CRM, then inside here, what you can do is you can integrate Zoom into the system here. So click into Zoom. And then this opens up the Zoom interface. So here you can schedule Zoom calls. The link is saved directly inside the contact record. And if you're on a, a specific plan of Zoom, when you record the Zoom meeting, that can then be saved as a recording file directly inside your Bittrex system. And also if you're gonna do internal chats, so if I go to, let's say, our employee database, then inside here, if I want to communicate with maybe a colleague, then if you have your Zoom integration, then inside here, if I go into here, and if I want to set up a chat with Dave, then I could also do a Zoom meeting room. So that would automatically create a Zoom meeting room inside the chat. So you can also do Zoom meetings with internal staff as well. So it's a Zoom integration. Okay, we don't have a Google Meet integration. Okay, another question there. Can we shift the pipeline from one section to another section? I assume by this you mean, can we move the deal from one pipeline to another? So what you can do is there's a few ways that you could do this. One way is using automation rules. Okay, so if I go to create an automation, what I could do inside here is I could copy or move a deal. So at a certain stage, let's say, for example, it's when the job has been paid or when we send the invoice. So you can customize this here. Maybe if the deal's lost, maybe you then have a retention team who then the deal would go to. Then I could come into here I can move this to a particular pipeline and that's then going to progress and I can choose what stage that goes to. So as soon as this deal hits the deal loss stage, we're moving it to another pipeline and it's going to go to that specific stage in the system and we can add who is going to be responsible. Now, another way is if we go out of here for a second. So that's using automations. Another way is if we go into our sales pipelines and tunnels. Then inside here, you can create links. So when we hit a certain stage, this won't copy the deal, it will move the deal. So let's say, for example, when the job has been paid, I want to move it to the Dubai office pipeline. You could create a funnel as well to move that information inside the system. Okay, so that's a few ways of how we can move deals around different areas of pipelines. And again, you can see here the number of pipelines that we have set up. Now, if you want to you know, have specific number of pipelines, again, you need to check what plan you are on. So if you're on the free cloud, you have one pipeline, so you're not gonna be able to move deals between pipelines. But if you're, say on a standard cloud, you've got 10 pipelines, professional is 20. If you're on an enterprise cloud plan, you have unlimited pipelines. So again, it's really important to make sure you're looking at what license you, you're interested in, make sure you've got enough of that functionality or with the on-premise edition, again, you have unlimited functionality there. So you have as many pipelines as you require. 
Okay, so that is a look at our pipeline question. Okay, so just a bit more information there. So moving a deal from a pipeline into an SPA. So you can create an SPA from a, a deal. So at a certain stage of the deal, what you could then do is you could create an SPA record you wouldn't be able to move the deal from here into the SPA. You could then create an SPA based on the deal moving to a certain stage and then link those two together because the deal is an entity in itself. So it's not going to be copied and moved to another entity. The SPA itself is an entity within the system. So you could create through an automation, a new SPA, and it could fill in with specific details and information inside the system. Okay, so that is a look at our SPA questions. Okay, so there is another question here around how can I add extra net users onto a project? So that's a good question. So if we go into our project area, so if you're new to Bittrex, just to kind of mention what this feature is, so with the project management tools in Bittrex, you also have the option to invite external users into a specific project. So whether that's the clients, if it's client projects you're doing, whether it's uh, maybe a supplier or a third party contractor, you can add those people into the project to work with you. Now, one thing to mention, uh, there has been a change recently to the users of Extranet. So if you are an external user, it still is classed as a seat now on the system. So let's say if you've got a, the professional cloud license, so that's 100 seats on the system. If you've got 50 internal staff, you will have 50 seats available for external users. Once they're used up, you would have to upgrade to a, a new tier class. So that's something to be just be aware of because it used to be different. So inside a project here, let's go into the about project and I can see all the members of the project. So what I can do inside here is I can click on invite. Now, what I could do is I could add an external user here. So what I could do is invite by email. So I add their email, first name, last name. I could then invite them into the project. Or if they're already in here, you can see what project we're going to invite them into. So just make sure you add their information correctly and you're then able to add them into the project like so. And then once you've done that, we can set permissions within the project. So that's really important as well. You don't really want external users to probably be able to, to see, to view, to, to edit every area of the project. So what you can then do is you can set access rights throughout the entire project. So let's say, for example, if we're looking at tasks, then here what we can do is we can decide who's able to create tasks in the project. You might not want the client to be able to create all the tasks. It may be really an internal policy that the internal staff create those tasks. So what we could do is here, you know, depending on your policy there, we might just allow the owner of the project to create those tasks or maybe the all the owner and the assistant so you can have a middle layer of management but if you're happy to have external users create tasks then you could maybe say all visitors are able to create tasks so you can control the permissions across all areas of the projects inside your bitrix 24 system Okay, so another question is how can we use the Scrum feature? Okay, so what we have inside our project management area of Bittrex is essentially it's another way of managing projects. So if you need to be able to kind of break down tasks into, let's say, bite-sized chunks, then you're able to use the Scrum methodology inside here. OK, so first of all, if you're wanting to create a new scrum, all you have to do is click on the create button here. Then what you do is you, you give this uh, scrum a title. So let's say it's webinar 2023 scrum. OK, and then I can extend the parameters here. 
So I can select here the, the scrum dates. So I could, very similar to how you create a project, really, I can choose the dates for how long this scrum is going to take place. Then I can choose the sprint lens. So the sprint is when we're, we're working on that specific group of tasks. So you can customize here the length of those sprints. And then we can also decide what other functionality we add into the scrum. Now I'm going to keep this private so it's only accessed by invitation only. So I, I want specific people in this scrum team. But here you can decide if you want that public, anyone can access that or you can keep it hidden so no one can even see this scrum in the Bitrix. They can't request to join. It's only invitation by the owner of the scrum. So here I'm going to now add my development team who are going to be working on the tasks. And then I'm going to add stakeholders, so people who have visibility over the actual project and the Scrum Master. So this is like the, 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 the project manager for the Scrum. And that will then create your Scrum page. OK, so inside here, so inside here, let's just customize the permissions and the theme. So let's just change that theme for a second. Okay, so now it's been updated. So inside this particular Scrum page, then what we've got, first of all, is we can add all of our tasks. Okay, so inside the backlog, this is where you, you store all of the tasks that are yet to be worked on. Okay, and if you're new to kind of the Scrum methodology, then what we do with Scrum is we essentially allocate tasks into a sprint. So you, your tasks are broken down, essentially, into bite-sized chunks. And then once we add tasks into here, let's say we, we add a task, we can story point those tasks as well. So inside here, once we have created tasks, you can choose your sprint dates, okay? And then once we've done that, we can then move those tasks across to the, the sprint. And then we can add story points. So this is essentially how difficult the task will be. And within your internal businesses and organizations, you would have a policy as to how many story points can be allocated to a specific sprint, okay? So we might actually say task three is also going to be part of this sprint. That's going to be quite a difficult task, so that's worth 15 story points. So then we've got our backlog. So now we can just focus on that particular sprint. It doesn't matter what other tasks are within the scroll. Those will be worked on at a different time. So it's a, a really powerful way to really deep dive into the tasks of your projects using the Scrum feature. Okay, so that is a look at how we can use the Scrum methodology. So that's quite, again, that's quite a new feature available inside Bitrix 24. So new features are, are constantly being added into the system. Okay, and if, if you do have any other questions about the, the Scrum features, then we can provide training so our team can train you on how to create your own uh, connections between your Scrum and the rest of your project team. And then we could also look to help you to, to build out and implement those Scrum features for your particular requirements. Okay, another question there. So I'm a Bitrix user. Uh, I missed the connectivity with LinkedIn. Is this on the roadmap? So yeah, th this question comes up quite a lot. So there isn't any, any standard functionality, but essentially we can use a, a middleware. So uh, essentially similar to, to Zapier. So we could create a, a connection between LinkedIn and Bitrix24 for you. So we would just need to know exactly what you would like to connect. It's quite a new piece of, of middleware that we, we can use. So we're able to connect LinkedIn with Bitrix24. We would just design out exactly how you would want that, that connection to work. So yeah, please do contact our, our, T, our account management team and they'll be able to help you with that question, okay. Okay, so that is a look there at Scrum and our, so we do have the ability to create a LinkedIn integration. It's not standard, but we, we do have the capability to create that for you as a, a custom integration. Okay, so that is a look at the questions for today. One last question that we had. 
earlier on this week was, is there the ability to set up different menu items for roles in the system? I'm afraid if you're on the, the cloud edition of Bittrex, all you can do with this menu structure is you can move modules into the hidden section here. Now, if, I don't know from the, the question, if you're using an on-premise edition, what you can then do is you can actually, with this, you don't need to hide in menu items. We could customize this. So based on the user role, we could strip out modules that aren't required. We can customize that menu. So it only shows the exact modules that that user needs access to. So if, if you are on the on-premise, then we could customize the menu structure for you, absolutely. So you really have a more simplified UI uh, and that allows you, you know, your team to navigate the system a lot easier. And then you can start to get more value out of your Bittrex 24 system. So please do contact us to discuss that in more detail. Okay, so that is the final few questions for today's Bitrix 24 Live. Thank you very much for all of the questions today. That's been really useful. I hope you found the answers to those useful for your Bitrix 24 systems. If you have any questions before our next live Q&A, please do. You can contact me, sam at interface.com or one of our team here at interface through sales at interface.com. We'll be happy to discuss any questions you have about Bitrix 24. Thank you very much for your time today. I look forward to seeing you on our next Bitrix 24 Live. Bye for now.